Um, you have Nimrod who turned into a tree in, in, in certain aspects of, of a story. You have Asar who was turned into a evergreen tree, as did Nimrod, like I said before. And you see this in scripture where Jesus says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Okay, so this is dealing with the same aspect concerning the tree. Now you will have particular people, and I'm going to explain this, where people will take Jeremiah 10 and will say that this is talking about Christmas, right? They will say that this is talking about the decoration of the tree, not realizing that when we're dealing with this particular aspect of Jeremiah chapter 10, it's not talking about the Christmas tree. Okay, it's not talking about the Christmas tree. It's talking about uh, Id idolatry. Okay, it's talking about idolatry because it talks about the craftsmen who take, who cut down a tree, right? And then decorate that particular material with silver and gold. Okay, it's not talking about you taking a tree, putting it in your house and decorating it. You know, that, that's not talking about that particular coaster, right? When you're dealing with the evergreen tree, when you're dealing with the pine tree, um, you're dealing with a certain aspect concerning the very uh, spirituality of your divinity, of your very enlightenment. When you look at the pine cone, right, the reason why you see certain um, popes, you know, people have the pine cone on their cane or whatever the case may be, or their staff. The reason why you see pine cones in certain temples and, and uh, churches and so on and so forth is because this represents enlightenment. The pine cone represents the pineal gland. Okay, now when the pineal, uh, the, the pine cone is closed, it represents that you are, you know, lost, your sheep or your flock, right? When the pine cone is open, that, re that represents your pineal gland being open. That represents enlightenment. That's when you become an Israel light. You become the elect, right? This is why it says in scripture, many are called, but few are chosen. You know, this is why uh, Jacob called a particular land pineal because he saw God face to face right here, right in the mind. All is mind and the universe is mental, okay? So when dealing with the Christmas tree, um, when dealing with anatomy, um, you're dealing with your body because your body is essentially a tree, right? If you look at your, your, your body in the way that it's made up, you know, it's, it's essentially when you look at the nerves, it's, you're a tree, right? You're the tree of life, okay? And each chakra, you know, because essentially you have seven chakras, each, each uh, chakra uh, produces fruit, okay? And it can be represented as fruit. So when you, when you see the ornament, ornaments on the tree, the ornaments on the tree represents that fruit, Right, that you produce, right? That that fruit, uh, in which the Bible also says that you judge a man by the fruit that he bears. It tells you in the book of Proverbs that a man, um, he eats off of the fruit, you know, off of his works, and you know, because life and death is in the power of the tongue, and whatever you speak, that's what you're going to eat. You know, you get what you put out into the universe. That's basically what it's saying. So when dealing with the Christmas tree, the ornaments, you know, you're dealing with fruit. Okay, you're dealing with fruit that you produce um, concerning the karas energy within you. Okay. When you look at the, the certain decorations, when you look at the, the lights, the lights represents the light, the lit ups of the, of the chakras, right? The, the light up of the chakra. When you see the spiral of the garland or the spiral of the lights around the Christmas tree that represents your Kundalini energy, that represents the golden ratio of the spiral of life, right? The circle of life. Um, this also represents your DNA pattern, the DNA, the way that the DNA is made up, is made up in that very swirl pattern. Um, you know, this represents that nine ether energy because we are nine ether beings, okay? And the very top of the tree, concerning the crown, right, the star, that's the northern star, but it also represents um, essentially enlightenment, right, represents enlightenment. When you see silver and gold, silver and gold is the duality of sun and the moon, uh, solar and lunar, okay, and that, that just represents balance within you, okay, mastery of self. So you have solar, which is your left side, and the moon, which is your right side. That's essentially what the Christmas tree is. There's really nothing else more to it other than that.